I mean, what do you guys think about, you know, um, the difference between um, bailing out different companies versus in crypto specifically versus letting co uh, companies fail? Because what we saw in the Fed in 2008, 2009, right, bailing out the banks, essentially, right, it kind of, it doesn't incentivize companies to get better. It basically right. says, oh, you know, slap on the wrist, not so bad, don't worry about it, you know, um, keep doing business as usual, pump it up, right? Um, versus we're actually, you know, letting companies go bankrupt, fail. It sucks in the short term, right, for this year. Um, but essentially, the idea is that it would, you know, renew the crypto space um, in particular and allow for better players and companies that actually are performing to uh, have more space to thrive. Do you see like that as uh, good for crypto or do you see that uh, there's some fatal flaw in that? In terms of like the corporate sector getting nuked, or are you talking about like it, it having the knockout effect with to crypto? Both, like just well, I mean, be, not not so much in the traditional space, but like more so within crypto because I think right now in crypto, right, right we have a bunch of companies that are going through that, and so um, you know it's like should we let that happen? Because I mean, Sam Bankman-Fried and a few and CZ and a few others have said like, hey, we want to bail some of these companies out, and you right. know the ones that they think right. The ones that yeah. it's it's kind of goes back to the the same stuff in two thousand eight two thousand nine. It's like the ones that the bank that the bankers like they didn't like Lehman Brothers. Oh, let that one fail. Right, right. <laughs> you know, but it's uh, yeah. like it, it it can be kind of um, you know, it's like they pick and choose the winners. And do we want right. that in crypto? Basically, right. So there's like I guess there's two. I mean, intrinsically, it kind of makes my stomach go like this. Kind of, I'm like, oh my, ugh, I don't like it. But the winners get to decide the rules, right? At the end of the day, too. So they, they're the most solvent companies who had the most cash flow, whether it was given to them or not. Uh, but uh, <laughs> had the most cash flow, and then they they can use that cash flow to then expand and grow their businesses. I mean, that is capitalism here. At the end of the day, because yeah. when Rock, but you know, something like a, I mean, I don't, I'm not saying that they they caused this, but like let's just say Rockefeller and sort of like Standard Oil crashing the you know crashing oil markets and, and the prices so low that they knocked out all their competition and then bought them all out. I don't think they did that yet. But if we get like two three cycles of this happening, eventually they'd be at a point where they would pretty much have like Standard Oil at some mm. point where they would own everything already, and right. then from there, yeah, then they would jack the prices up and everything or the fees. I would imagine. Well, they, um, they, yeah. Yeah, they, they could they do whatever they yeah. want at that point. Right. But there is that there is the whole thing, too, where like biz, a big biz, a business being competitive and actually making all that money. And the reason they're in control is because they're making all that money means they're useful, sort of like an Amazon versus the government who just gets the money from printing it, and not hard work and not providing any services or value in the economy. That's the problem for the most part. So we don't have that in crypto right now as that I know of. But I mean, I do. I have known of like. I mean, this is something that I remember. I just wish I'd saved the article and stuff there. There was this whole thing where the Dallas Fed was looking to invest into, uh, I mean, they did actually invest into some of these uh, protocols like DAI and stuff and Maker. Mm. And I, I wish I could just find it anymore. I can't find it anymore. But I've been, I mean, I think, we, I, mean, I, I think it's sold, I've said this quite a long time already, but like, you know, there has been some government money coming into the space, but like that's the only direct one I've ever seen ever. But for the most part, it has been just companies using their own balance sheet money to right. then invest into crypto for the most part. But yeah. And then with people within crypto as well, um, doing that as well, like the bigger players. But um, what about you, Plancy? What do you think? Because um, it's kind of a complex subject, you know? Yeah. I, I think humans in general are going to want to save the company because they're concerned about the customers, right? Yeah, for sure. And that that's where like it does, you could say like it depends on the business and the sector. But in general, I don't like the idea of, of uh, Definitely, I don't like the idea of a bail-in from the public through tax dollars or whatever, printing money like that. I mean, I don't like the idea of everyone taking the hit because these banks are taking too much risk. Like what we saw, you know, with the housing, you know, 2008 or, or just these different events, right, where, you know, banks, you, you don't want to incentivize that or you don't want to have that. If you if you create that as a culture within within the uh, system, then then they they'll it's, it's a safety net. So then they're going to, OK, we're going to take, you know, more risk than we would. Because you know, worst case scenario, government's going to bail us out. I don't, I don't definitely don't like that. Um, you know, or, I think or within crypto, big daddy, you know, yeah, bail us out yeah. And CZ, I mean, like, yeah, he's they, he says forty billion in cash. You know, they're they're talking like fifty companies. You know, there's probably a lot of them that are in rough shape. So, um, yeah, I definitely would say that 
like well, similar to what DC said. Like I, I definitely think that those companies that are smart, that 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 are smart with their capital, you know, when the market's in a, in a rough space, you know, they come in and they can they can you know buy everything on the cheap and and essentially their prudence and their their ability to to manage their business and their capital and not overextend themselves in the bull market and everything, you know, they get rewarded for in the in the down cycle. They get they get the ability to to you know consolidate. Yeah, I mean, if it's it's like one or two companies that ends up just like buying everything, that's not necessarily great. But um, yeah, I mean, like monopoly. <laughs> yeah, you got you don't you know you, we don't want to end up with yeah just monopolies. Like competition is great. You know, we want to see right. more competition, more options because that's always best for the consumer to have multiple options, just because it creates that competitiveness, which is going to drive down prices or or make the services better for the individuals and the users. So that's always healthy. So. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, if businesses are just like reckless and, and just like bad business models or, or really, you know, poor run companies with bad CEOs, I mean, yeah, they should they shouldn't be bailed out. I mean, they shouldn't be. They, you know, you if, if there's someone that can step in. Yeah, I think that I think the management for sure should be replaced. But if, if there's someone that can step in that, that actually uh, can improve uh, or like build upon and, and create something better, you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, yeah. it's a called it is a complicated question like you, you said but as, as a culture like you know as a as a, like um, an accepted norm we don't want everyone to just be creating businesses where you know uh, worst case scenario um, you know they, we don't want we don't want, uh, people in crypto to think be thinking like move fast and break things because this is the financial this is a financial sector like we're not like this is we're not creating some app that has no impact if it breaks or, or something this is finance so like you know, move fast and break things when you have billions of dollars of other people's life savings, not the best thing to be doing. And right. and as a great example, I mean, with Celsius, I mean, absolutely way too fast growth, reckless mm -hmm. growth, like go to go from 40 employees to like 800 or whatever it was in a span of a year, year and a half. I mean, just assuming awesome. the bull market's going to go on forever and just like expand, 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 you know, that you want to, you want to be growing, uh, cons like look at like, yeah, you just want to be growing at a reasonable rate and be making sure you'll have contingencies for every scenario when you're dealing with other people's money. Um, right. And that's the biggest issue, I think, with, with some of these uh, lending companies is obviously Voyager. I mean, you can't, you can't give half your, your, your money to like one hedge fund in crypto that's, you know. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> Voyager is, is super DJ and to base your whole company and all those people's, you know, money that in the app on just one company staying in business and not having a bad event, right? So, yeah, I don't think Voyager should, I mean, Voyager did file bankruptcy, but like, yeah, I think that the owners or, or the CEOs or anyone that has shares, like those should just go to zero. I don't know if they did or didn't, but like they mm. should, anyone that was involved with that, with managing that company should be, lose all their shares and be done. Like they should be gone. Yeah, right. And I would, and I would say with Celsius, it's to be determined, but most likely with Celsius, exact same thing. All the management should be gone. All, they should lose all their shares, full reset. Like with Voyager and Celsius, full reset. BlockFi too. I mean, BlockFi, same thing. All three of them, like full reset. Like anyone that was involved up until now, they don't deserve to manage other people's wealth. I'm sorry. It's just the reality of the situation. Especially, I would even say especially BlockFi, man, because they've been hemorrhaging money the entire bull market. I don't even think they ever made money. That's like, true. The, the, I mean, Zach it, it got, best CEO in the world. Right. Oh, that, I, I, like, I mean, when back when we were like in, in Celsius and stuff, when we were like investing in the coin, we would laugh at BlockFi because if they would have to raise every fucking six months in order to stay solvent and stuff. And they mm. got so bad. Can you imagine like your biggest investors, the Gemini twins said, yeah, yeah, yeah we're not throwing any more money with you guys anymore. Like the, the Gemini the twins hole. told you no. Like, yeah. wow. Yeah, that that's not great. But you know, when you were talking about the whole uh, Voyager thing, it just made me think that you were Obi Wan Kenobi, and I was and I was Voyager on the lava thing, and I was like, "You doubt my powers when you <laughs> slash my legs off that hole to the lava." <laughs> Give up! I've got the upper ground. <laughs> you doubt my powers. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I think um, it, it's interesting here in crypto because we haven't we've gone through this before. Right. And th that also is kind of rearing its head here in the next couple of months with Mount Gox, but on a totally different scale. Right. Like Mount Gox happened back in 2014 in terms of like the main hack. There were a few hacks before then, of course. Right. But what happened with that story, right, I think is kind of like a microcosm of what is happening right now with these lending companies in just a different sense. Right now, the difference is we have way more regulations that these companies have because they wanted to do business in the United States. 
that they want that basically they have followed, whereas Mt. Gox didn't do any of that. Right. And so I think um, it's been about eight years for Mt. Gox. Um, and now that's uh, we talked about that a little bit on Friday. And I think you guys have tweeted about it. Um, but and a lot of people have been talking about it. But basically, right towards the end of August, um, people who basically got affected by the hack will be able to get their money back um, to some extent. Um, and they get to, if they choose cash, then basically Mt. Gox, they could have been already since November when they did, when they basically announced, hey, we're going to, because I think it was like November 21st, which was about a week or 10 days after the actual all-time high on Bitcoin, they announced, hey, we're going to, um, what do you call it, uh, give back the money to the people who were affected um, sometime later, right? They didn't say a date. And so they needed to basically, because liquidate some Bitcoin, um, either be you know, in August or already, um, I would assume already, um, because they give people uh, two options. Basically, you want to get paid in crypto, you want to get paid in cash. If you get paid in cash, then they have to liquidate the Bitcoin beforehand to be able to pay in cash. And that's what they're going to pay first, right? So I think there's a lot of people kind of looking at how that's going to affect crypto now. But I also think in terms of just kind of looking at what we were talking about with CeFi here in crypto, um, you know, we've, we're seeing this play, story play out again, um, basically. So it'll be interesting to kind of see like what is similar and what is different this time around. Do you guys know if, if um, so you're saying that you think there's been some selling already of that Bitcoin because possibly like, it's total speculation. Okay. Cause yeah, I'm not sure. Like, again, I'm, I don't trust always everything to do with what glass has, of course, but, but they do have um, a chart where it shows a wallet of Mt. Gox. Right, and, Jeff. 